So now let's refresh our memory on hormones related to the female reproductive tract, as well as some new ones. So first of all, one that we have not talked about before is GnRH, or gonadotropin-releasing hormone. GnRH is made by the pituitary, and it causes the release of FSH and LH. So we have a lot of hormones stimulating the production of other hormones. FSH, if you remember, stands for follicle stimulating hormone. Remember we said it looks like fish with no eye? So think fish, think fish eggs. So in females, it's going to increase production of oocytes or development of oocytes and also it's going to stimulate the ovaries to increase estrogen levels. LH has a couple of roles here. Like in males, it's going to increase production of sex hormones. So it's going to stimulate the ovaries. And it plays a really important role in females in that it stimulates ovulation. So the release of that oocyte. Now estrogens and progesterone can get a little complicated. We're going to try to keep it fairly simple for this chapter. Estrogens and progesterone both help with development and functioning of the female reproductive tract. If we take a look at this graph here, as I said, it can start looking a little bit complicated, but it's really not that bad. Let's look at two different things and then we'll kind of tease apart uh, the estrogens and progesterone. So first of all, what we're seeing up here is kind of the cycle of what's happening within that ovary. So you have a follicle develop, it grows, eventually it ruptures, which is ovulation right here. And then the remainder that follicles, the corpus luteum, as we mentioned, it, it produces hormones to maintain the pregnancy um, until either a placenta takes over or implantation does not occur. If implantation does not occur and menses begin, so you start to slough off the endometrial lining, then it basically just kind of scars up. So that's just kind of the 28-day cycle of the ovary. We know from before that luteinizing hormone, we see a big spike right before that ovulation, right before that oocyte ruptures, or that follicle ruptures and releases that oocyte. So we know then that LH is kind of playing a big role in this process. FSH stays relatively steady because we're kind of continually developing these follicles um, for the next cycle. If we look down here, this bottom part of the graph, now this is the 28-day cycle of your actual lining of the uterus, or the endometrium. So it sloughs off, and that's kind of how we begin our cycle, is we're in the process of sloughing off that endometrium, so that's your menses, or think of that as your period, and then our menstrual phase, and then we go into what's called the proliferative phase. So we proliferate or build or grow this endometrial lining. And notice that as this lining is building up, we're seeing a kind of steady rise in estrogen. So estrogen plays a big role in the building up of that endometrium. Now, if this ovulated oocyte up here gets fertilized. It's going to implant about five days-ish after it's ovulated. So you figure it's kind of maybe right about in here. It's implanting. If it does not implant in this kind of window here, then what happens is, we watch kind of look here, the green progesterone, right about when it should um, ovulate, or sorry, should implant in the uterine wall, we see a peak of progesterone. If implant doesn't, implantation doesn't occur, progesterone levels crash, and as a result, you slough off that endometrium. If you were pregnant, so if this got fertilized and implanted in the uterine wall here, then your progesterone levels would stay high, 
and you would maintain that endometrial lining. So let's kind of think about that. Let's go back to our little list here. So estrogen, if we're just talking about the uterine lining, the endometrium, estrogen helps to build the endometrium. So it's preparing the uterus for pregnancy. Progesterone, if it stays high, its job is to maintain the endometrium for pregnancy. If it crashes or drops, then menses occurs. So you slough off that endometrial lining. So the job of progesterone isn't to cause you your period, but it's to help maintain that nice thick endometrial lining that we see here. If we lose that progesterone, if it drops, then that's telling the body, oops, that's telling the body that we need to cycle through again and start over. Now, in addition to building the endometrium, estrogen is going to help with development of your reproductive organs. So that means development of the ovaries, the um, external genitalia, the uh, endometrial lining, as we mentioned, uh, breast development, and so on, broadening of the hips, all those things that we see at puberty. So development of those reproductive organs and our secondary sex characteristics, which we talked about back with that endocrine system, where we're seeing um, body hair development, the stinky sweat glands, we're seeing broadening of the hips, breast development, um, body growth that helps out the growth hormone with that. So we see increased body mass, we see growth in height, so skeletal structure. So all of those kind of changes that you think you expect to see during puberty.